While recording your lost, little girl, Jim Morrison was allegedly receiving oral pleasure from one of his girlfriends. He was young, wild, and free. He lived his life in the first lane. Fast cars, women, booze, drugs were part of his life. That's what made his life interesting. Jim Morrison was best known for his role as lead vocalist and lyricist for the legendary band, The Doors. His unique style, charisma, and on-stage presence made him one of the most influential figures in the rock history. Jim Morrison and The Doors released six studio albums, which included The Doors, Strange Days, Waiting for the Sun, The Soft Parade, Morrison Hotel, and The Los Angeles Woman. The Doors generated millions of dollars every year from royalties and merchandise. In 1970, Morrison left the band and moved to Paris, where he wrote poetry. He had a bright future ahead of him. Unfortunately, on July 3, 1971, he was found dead in bathtub in Paris. His longtime girlfriend, Pamela Corson, discovered his body in his hotel room. His death was mystery, however, it is suspected that he overdosed with heroin. Join us as we bring to you Jim Morrison unfortunate death, crazy relationships, lovers, mansions, drug use, cause of death and grave. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel to watch other interesting videos? James Douglas Morrison was born on December 8, 1943, in Melbourne, Florida, to Clara Virginia and George Stephen Morrison, who worked in the United States Navy. Morrison was raised a military brat. He attended several schools because he had to move due to the nature of his father's work. He completed third grade at Fairfax County Elementary School in Virginia and later attended Charles Flato Elementary School in Kingsville, Texas. He later attended St. John's Methodist School in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then Longfellow School sixth grade graduation program in San Diego. In 1957, attended Alameda High School in Alameda, California for his freshman and first semester of his sophomore year. In 1959, his family moved back to Virginia. He graduated from George Washington High School in June 1961. He attended Florida State University, where he studied film and theater. However, he dropped out of college and moved to California to pursue his passion for music, personal life. Jim Morrison was a rock god, however, his love life was messy. Every woman wanted to have a relationship with him. He dated some of the most beautiful women in the world, it is estimated him body count must have been more than 1,000 girls. This girls came in all shapes and sizes. They were also from different races. While recording your lost, little girl, keep in mind that Jim Morrison was allegedly receiving oral pleasure. Let's have a look at the beautiful women he dated. Jim Morrison and Pamela Corson had an on and off relationship for the last five years of his life. The couple met each other in 1965 at the nightclub of Gazari in Los Angeles. Corson and Morrison were instantly drawn to each other. At the time, she studied art at Los Angeles City College. She loved the wildlife of rock stars and that is why she fell for Morrison. Morrison described her as his cosmic partner. She inspired Morrison to write several songs, which included Queen of the Highway and 20th Century Fox. In December 1967, Pamela obtained a marriage license in Denver, Colorado, while she was on the road with the rock band The Doors. However, she failed to have the license filed. Morrison made her have full access to his money. He financed Theme is the fashion boutique that she had dreamt of opening. Their relationship was far from a fairy tale. Drug abuse, repeated infidelities, explosive arguments were always part of this relationship. One day, while having arguments, Morrison set fire to a room that Corson locked herself in after a fight. She thankfully made it out unscathed. Despite the ups and downs, the couple always reconciled. In 1971, the couple moved to Paris together where they stayed for a few months before Jim Morrison's death. While in Paris, the two lovebirds had indulged in old habits and frequented many notorious nightclubs. On July 3, 1971, Pamela found Morrison unresponsive in the bathtub of their Paris apartment. It is believed he had an overdose of heroin that caused heart failure. 
Some people accused her of playing a role in his death because she was the sole heir in his will. After his death, her addictions grew worse. After three years, she suffered the same fate as his former boyfriend. She died at age 27 of a heroin overdose, just like him. Nico and Jim Morrison dated from July 1968 to August 1967. The two met through a mutual friend, Danny Fields. Danny introduced Morrison to Nico, an actress and model. She was beautiful and Danny wanted Morrison to settle for this blonde. He wanted him to stop seeing all those slimy little groupies. Their first meeting was a little bit tense. They stared at each other, not knowing what to say. When the party stated and the drugs kicked in Morrison annoyed Nico and she cried, Nico told Fields that he was evil. Despite the first unromantic first meeting, Nico and Morrison began dating. It was an unholy alliance based on mutual drug addiction and alcohol abuse. Nico dyed his hair red after realizing that Morrison was obsessed with redheads. This couple were icy and mysterious. They were like two cats always following each other around the house. Nico and Jim Morrison made a blood ritual. They cut their thumbs in the desert and made their blood mingle. Day after day, they fought and made up. When Jim Morrison died, a piece of her also died. Nico died on July 18, 1988. She suffered a heart attack while riding a bicycle. She injured her head, causing a cerebral hemorrhage. She passed on later that evening. Judy Huddleston and Jim Morrison dated from 1967 to 1971. She met Jim backstage at a concert in California. Their intermittent relationship lasted for four years till his death. Jim knew that this relationship was purely sexual. However, Judy loved him and she did everything to make this relationship work. Jim drug use made him be hostile to her, but she was very patient with him. Jim Morrison also had other beautiful women who he dated. He cheated on her with rock groupie girls, but as they say, love is blind. She loved him till when he died. She wrote a book, Love Him Madly, which detailed their love story. Jim Morrison and Lynn Krieger dated from 1966 to 1967. They met in 1966 when The Doors were performing in New York on November 1966. She invited him to his apartment and they had a night-long chat. Jim told her about his hometown of Los Angeles. Lynn later visited him in Los Angeles. Whenever The Doors would go east, he would always visit her. Despite the on and off relationship, the couple always had time for each other. However, the end of their relationship was when Jim bedded one of Lynn housemates. This made her so mad and they separated. Eve Babitz and Jim Morrison dated in 1966. Babitz was a party animal. She knew everyone in Los Angeles party scene. They met with Jim Morrison at one of the parties. They had wild fan. She slept with Jim Morrison and later described the encounter as being in bed with Michelangelo David for Esquire. Even now, the relationship was a one-night stand. The moment was unforgettable. She also had relationships with Russia, Ferris Gallery, curator Walter Hopp's mistress, and Musi. Peggy Green and Jim Morrison dated from 1964 to 1965. The couple met at a club where they were joined by mutual friends. That night, Jim was calm and composed. This made Green be attracted to him. That night, they didn't talk so much. A few days later, Peggy Green and her friends were invited for a party in Bel Air. Jim Morrison also attended the party and they picked up where they had left. They talked for a long time and shared a lot in common. However, this encounter, they didn't hit it off immediately. Night after night, they met in a club. They would talk and the end game was the same result. Both of them were shy. They met again at one of the parties in Hollywood. That night was an icebreaker. The couple had wild fun. They began going out together and exchanging fluids. Jim Morrison showed him his wild side. He would drink, curse, and yell. Peggy Green loved this guy, but he always made her cry because of love. They later broke up. Mary Werbelow and Jim Morrison dated from July 1962 to July 1965. They met when Jim was living in Oslo Avenue, Clearwater. Jim was her first love and the pair were inseparable. That was before Jim got famous with The Doors. The couple played several fan games and this made them inseparable. From picnics to movies, 
the couple enjoyed time together. The couple connected to a level they didn't have to talk to each other to know what the other was thinking. They wrote each other thousands of letters. When her father got one of the letters from him and read it, he banned Jim from the Werbelow house. When Jim moved to California, she followed him there. Not even a gift of antique bedrooms set from her parents could stop her from following her heart. However, when Jim Morrison got famous, they separated due to infidelity. Tandy Martin and Jim Morrison dated from 1957 to 1961. She was Jim Morrison high school girlfriend. They lived in the same neighborhood through a mutual friend Jeff Morehouse. They had a stormy and toxic relationship as he was always teasing her. When they finished high school and Jim Morrison relocated to another place, the couple separated. American model Enid Carl and Jim Morrison were once lovers. The two lovebirds met at one of the clubs in Los Angeles. They hit it off and had so much fun. However, their relationship was built on lust and a good time. The couple separated after a while. Ingrid Thompson and Jim Morrison had an encounter in 1970. They met at one of the club parties. She was attracted to him because of the fame. Jim Morrison made girls go wet when they saw him. They had good time together before they separated. It was only for lust. Patricia Keneally and Jim Morrison had an encounter in Jan, 1969. She worked as an editor-in-chief of Jazz and Pop. She interviewed Jim Moriozin in January, 1969. They later became friends and then lovers. They exchanged marriage vows in a Celtic pagan hand fasting ceremony in June 1970. However, hand fasting is not legal. Morrison addressed letters and poems to her as Patricia Morrison. When Patricia got pregnant, she turned cold on him. He didn't tell the marriage too serious and they separated. Jojo Lane and Jim Morrison dated in 1969. The couple met at the Boston Tea Party. It was love at first sight, and Morrison loved what he saw. They went out for several dates and parties. He gave her the wood, and they loved each other so much. However, both of them were promiscuous. Jim Morrison dated other women while she was involved in relationships with Jimi Hendrix, Rod Stewart, Jimi Hendrix, among others. She died after hitting her head falling down a flight of stairs on 13th July 1952 in Boston. Morrison also had relationship with Mexican exotic dancer and porn star Kitten Native Adad, both of whom he encountered in Los Angeles. In a YouTube interview titled Jim Morrison Women, Native Adad, who was also once involved with cult film director Russ Mayer, expressed he was attracted to women who could captivate and exuded glamour. He desired women who caught everyone's attention. With a smile, she disclosed that many of the girls would mention that he would engage with them and then doze off. Jim Morrison had an affair and long-term friendship with the groupie Pamela Zarubica. She was a call away when Morrison was bored and with no other girl he called her. They did drugs and alcohol most of the time. Their relationship was built on quicksand and the two lovers remained friends even after separating. Jade Barrymore and Jim Morrison had sexual liaisons with Jim Morrison. She was known for being a popular groupie in Los Angeles. They had a good time together and enjoyed every moment of it. They were together in several parties and had wild fun. Apart from Jim Morrison, she was also romantically involved with Jackson Brown, James Taylor, and Kiefer Sutherland. Jim Morrison, the enigmatic frontman of The Doors, remains an iconic figure in the annals of rock and roll history. His mesmerizing stage presence, haunting vocals, and poetic lyrics defined an era and continue to inspire generations. As we delve into Morrison's career with The Doors, we uncover a journey marked by musical innovation, controversy, and enduring influence. Formed in 1965 in Los Angeles, The Doors comprised Jim Morrison, vocals, Ray Manzarek, keyboards, Robbie Krieger, guitar, and John Densmore, drums. Together, they forged a unique sound that blended rock, blues, jazz, and psychedelia, captivating audiences with their raw energy and unconventional compositions. Morrison's role as the lead vocalist and lyricist was pivotal in shaping The Doors' identity. His lyrics, often introspective and laden with poetic imagery, explored themes of love, freedom, and existentialism. 
Songs like Light My Fire, Break On Through, To The Other Side, and The End showcased Morrison's lyrical prowess and his ability to convey profound emotions with haunting intensity. One of the Doors' defining moments came with the release of their self-titled debut album in 1967. Featuring the hit single Light My Fire, the album catapulted the band to stardom and established them as pioneers of the burgeoning psychedelic rock movement. Morrison's commanding vocals and charismatic stage persona further solidified his status as a rock icon, drawing comparisons to contemporaries like Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin. However, Morrison's career with The Doors was not without its controversies. His rebellious nature and penchant for pushing boundaries often clashed with societal norms, leading to several infamous incidents, including his arrest for indecent exposure during a concert in Miami in 1969. Despite the backlash, Morrison's defiance only added to his mystique cementing his reputation as a countercultural icon. The Doors' influence extends far beyond their brief existence as a band. Their groundbreaking fusion of rock, blues, and poetry laid the groundwork for future generations of musicians of musicians, inspiring countless artists across genres. From punk to alternative rock, The Doors' impact can be heard in the music of bands like The Stooges, Nirvana, and Pearl Jam, who cite Morrison as a major influence on their work. Moreover, Morrison's literary aspirations and poetic sensibilities set him apart from his contemporaries. He was not merely a rock star, but a poet whose words transcended the confines of music. Morrison's poetry, often introspective and existential, explored themes of identity, mortality, and the human condition with a depth and complexity that belied his young age. In 1988, Morrison was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of The Doors, cementing his status as one of the greatest frontmen in rock history. His influence on popular culture continues to endure, with countless books, films, and documentaries dedicated to chronicling his life and legacy. Perhaps Morrison's greatest legacy lies in the enduring power of his music to evoke emotion and provoke thought. Songs like Riders on the Storm, Los Angeles Woman, and The Crystal Ship remain timeless classics that resonate with listeners of all ages. Morrison's haunting vocals and poetic lyrics continue to captivate new generations, ensuring that his legacy will endure for years to come. Jim Morrison's untimely death on July 3, 1971. At the age of 27, shocked the world and left fans mourning the loss of a rock icon. The circumstances surrounding his death remain shrouded in mystery, fueling speculation and conspiracy theories for decades. Morrison was found dead in the bathtub of his apartment in Paris, France, by his girlfriend, Pamela Corson. The official cause of death was listed as heart failure, with no evidence of foul play or drug overdose found at the scene. However, Due to the lack of an autopsy and the hazy circumstances surrounding Morrison's final days, questions persist regarding the true cause of his demise. Morrison's body was laid to rest in the Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris, a site that has since become a place of pilgrimage for fans from around the world. The funeral itself was a small and private affair, attended only by close friends and family members. Despite his status as a rock star, Morrison's final resting place is marked by a simple headstone adorned with his name in the epitaph, Keda Tan Daimona Itoi, Greek for true to his own spirit. Over the years, Morrison's grave has become a site of reverence and tribute, with fans leaving flowers, candles, and handwritten notes in homage to the Lizard King. Despite the passage of time, Morrison's legacy endures, his music and poetry continuing to inspire generations of artists and fans alike. Before his death, Morrison had written a will that left everything to Pamela Corson. However, after his death, several women came forward claiming part of the inheritance, claiming Jim was the father of their children. His former bandmates also claimed Morrison owed them cash advances that had been paid during his lifetime. In 1974, the court determined that she was the sole heir of Jim Morrison. 
However, Pamela died several months later, aged 27 years old. Her parents inherited her estate, which included one quarter to the Doors royalty income and other intellectual property. For several years, Jim's parents fought for a share of their child wealth. Jim and Pamela's parents agreed on an out-of-court settlement and new terms, which gave the Morrison parents half of the royalties, an eighth share in full control of Jim's image, music, and future royalties. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.